So now let's talk about how 802.11n addresses these problems. Fundamentally, there are three key areas in terms of any uh, uh, wireless technology. There is the RF, there is the physical layer, and there is the MAC layer. So what the RF does is send analog signals, just like radio. RF sends analog signals uh, over the air that uh, can be sent in one or multiple streams. So just think of FM radio, right? So where there is a transmitter that's broadcasting, and of course, inherently, all transmissions are broadcast in an RF spectrum. And there is a receiver that's listening to it, gets the analog signals, and tries to make sure that the signal fidelity is good. That's the purpose of RF. The purpose of the physical layer is to convert from analog to digital. So effectively, you try to glean as many bits as you can out of every megahertz of spectrum. And the third layer is the MAC layer, the medium access layer, which tries to frame uh, higher layer packets or payload into uh, MAC level frames, or essentially uh, frames that go over the wireless network, and then tries to resolve contentions among multiple transmitters in order to deliver some sort of end-to-end -end capacity. So again, to step back, there are three key layers. RF, which is responsible for signal fidelity, works in the analog regime. The phi layer, or the physical layer, which takes analog, spits out digital. And the goal here is to maximize spectral efficiency. And the third layer is the MAC layer, which tries to resolve uh, effective usage of the channel among multiple users. And the goal here, therefore, is protocol efficiency. So with 802.11n, advances have been made in all of these areas. Unlike previous protocols, which kind of focused on one or the other, you know, the migration from one 2 megabit ABG to, uh, uh, B to 11 megabit B was really all about trying to get from um, some basic Barker encoding to CCK. The migration from B to G or A was really one of trying to get OFDM into the mix. But with 802.11n, the uh, mechanisms are far-reaching and pervasive. They impact RF, Phi, and MAC. And here are the key implications. Now, to get into any level of detail is going to take a very long time. So what I'm going to try to do is abstract out the concept rather than focus on the mechanisms. So in terms of the RF, there are fundamentally three concepts. The first one is, rather than talking on a single stream from a sender to a receiver, Let's try to transmit on multiple streams from a sender to a receiver so that you can multiply the amount of traffic that is sent. Now, a high-level analogy of this would be, you know, if you've got music, you might listen to multiple tracks, some tracks on your left ear, some on your right ear. That allows, in fact, independent tracks to be transmitted and, and received, and then the user in, its, in their own head ends up recombining. That allows uh, more information or richer music to be created with effectively the same bandwidth. Now, the concept is the same, wherein rather than transmitting one stream at higher and higher data rates, we try to parallelize the number of streams and make sure that different information is encoded in each of these streams so that at the receiver, you get a rich mixture of all of these. That's the first one. The second key mechanism is where the transmitter directs beams. Now, notice I just said a few minutes back, RF is inherently broadcast, right? So if you have a base station that's transmitting data, everybody around the station hears it. However, if it turns out that the receiver is you know, some distance away, rather than just spray the energy all over the air, it makes more sense to figure out how to target the energy and focus the beams from the sender to the receiver. The trick here is to do this in such a way so that it's not static. Because a particular access point is not just talking to one station. It's talking to many stations. And what it needs to do on a per packet basis is to be able to figure out which is the best way to target the energy towards the receiver so that you are able to push maximum energy in the direction of the receiver and waste very little energy everywhere else. How do you do that? Well, this, the actual uh, electronics of this is quite complicated. And it really deals with how uh, you uh, both adjust the amount of energy and the phase uh, that you send on the different antennas that are governed by channel coefficients. But the top level point is you use multiple antennas 
in order to make sure that you phase them right so that energy gets directed. It's essentially like pointing beams, right? You point, like pointing light beams. So rather than just spray light beams, you point them towards the receiver. That's the second concept. The third concept is really one of how a receiver gets signals that bounce off diff, you know, walls, and therefore you might get multiple signals, and how the receiver is able to clean up the channel. Right? This is just like echo cancellation. So if it turns out that you get you know, one beam coming straight at you, one beam coming in a curved fashion, what the receiver needs to do is make sure that it accounts for the offset of the second beam and then automatically pushes, when it does its internal processing, pushes the um, arrival time of the second beam by some amount of time so that it's effectively able to synchronize the arrival of all the beams. So notice that this sounds pretty complex, and it is. But with the electronics, it is in fact possible to see when you're getting multiple streams of signal, to see exactly how much one is offset by the other, and then logically try to synchronize them in virtual time so that you're able to get exactly the same signal at the same virtual time, which allows you to combine and improve signal fidelity. OK, so now let's step back and see what the three mechanisms were. The first is, for a given amount of RF usage, rather than send one stream, you send parallel streams. The second is, the transmitter tries to waste minimum amount of energy. And rather than sending beams everywhere, it focuses them towards the receiver. The third one is, if the receiver is actually receiving multiple beams because of reflection, refraction, what have you, what it tries to do is make sure that it equalizes the delay or equalizes the arrival time of all of these different beams so that it is able to think of these different beams as constructively interfering with each other rather than destructively interfering with each other. By a combination of all of these mechanisms, 802.11n is able to significantly increase the quality of the signal and hence increase the rate as well as the range. Broadly speaking, you would have heard of, these ter of this term MIMO, which is uh, multiple input, multiple output, which really refers to the fact that you have multiple antennas between the sender and the receiver and multiple streams over which packets are being transmitted or frames are being transmitted. So that's on the RF layer. 